We're obviously going to be getting a lot of data the next two days with the PCE report being one of them. And then, of course, the uh, non-farm payroll report on Friday morning. That's really the big question. Uh, we have 100,000 jobs expected on Friday morning for the month of October. This obviously looks extremely different than what was uh, just printed today by the ADP report. So it's anyone's guess how this number is going to come in because these numbers have been all over the place the last few months, and they're, we know they're already subject to very large revisions. But what's obviously very clear is that rates have been moving up, and that hasn't really changed. Here's your 10-year rate. Here's your big falling wedge. It looks like we've broken out. It looks like we're very close to potentially important level at 433, 435, call it. That could lead to rates on the 10-year moving significantly higher from where they are right now. So uh, 10-year rates need to be, continue to be watched. The 30-year rate also has had a very big move, clear downtrend broken. Uh, looks like it continued to goes up. Uh, and when you look at the dollar, that's obviously been responding positively as well. So higher rates, stronger dollars seem to be the continued outlook, at least until the data tells us otherwise. This is obviously pushing real rates higher as well. So the TIP ETF is probably the easiest and fastest way for anyone to keep track of real rates. When the, TT, when the TIP ETF is uh, going down, real rates are rising. And when the TIP ETF is going up, real rates are falling. So right now the TIP ETF has been going down, real rates are rising. And you can see that we're getting to this uh, point in time too with the real rates uh, where if we break below this 108 region, we could see real rates really begin to move up again uh, the tip ETF moved down. HYG, also important to keep an eye on. This is obviously, we're talking about credit, we're talking about high yield. Uh, HYG, obviously, in an important spot. You can see that currently we've been trending lower on the HYG, and we're going to want to keep track of this area right in here around this 7930 area. Clearly, a break uh, sets up uh, a move uh, down. Uh, SP 500 today uh, was mostly flat. We haven't really been doing much the last couple of days. I think the thing that stands out here is that volume levels have really been uh, sliding more recently. RSI certainly been showing signs of rolling over. Now you have this uh, consolidation coming potentially to an end. Uh, we basically have this you know, rising wedge pattern in the uh, S&P 500. Uh, at this point, there's just we're running out of room here. Uh, what this kind of implies is as of right now, uh, this broke as of the close. And then as of at this point, uh, if this is correct and this is breaking, uh, we'll need to get confirmation of this, obviously. So in order for that to happen, you're probably going to need to see the S&P 500 trade below 58.35 on the futures. Um, and then that would put into play this 57 and a quarter area, which would become the next major level of support. Once you break through that, you're then talking about significantly lower back into this 40, 54, uh, 50 area, which would be the next major level of support. Um, and so, I mean, that could work depending upon how this works out. You could see that would actually be the 61.8% retracement level. So if this is a rising wedge and this is breaking, uh, this could be one area that we could be looking at. Uh, on a pullback. So we'll just keep our eyes open for this over the next couple of days to see how that begins to develop. But again, the setup looks uh, pretty nice when you look at it, at least from the way the technicals look and the way the retracement looks at this point. Whether or not it turns into something more, I'm not worrying about that at this point. We just have to see a break first. Also, uh, we saw implied correlations uh, rise today. Uh, this is probably going to be something that continues to rise. We're now getting through earnings season. As we go through earnings season, implied volatility levels for individual stocks decline. Uh, that tends to make stocks more correlated, uh, and therefore you begin to see the implied correlation index moving higher. And uh, typically, the implied correlation index trades inverse to the S&P 500. So again, this would be another signal that if this begins to rise in some sort of meaningful fashion, that this would also imply that the market moves uh, lower. So again, I know a lot of people are looking for the market to move higher after the election uh, just because, I guess, because the, the expectation is that volatility is going to come down. But um, right now, I mean, if you look at the pure technicals, remove the fact that there's an election coming up in a couple of days, remove the election from the equation and just look at the pure technicals, 
they're telling you implied correlations go higher, S&P 500 comes down as a result, which is uh, the obviously the opposite of what the majority thinking is at this point. Also, we continue to see a lot of weakness uh, overseas. Uh, here's the French uh, CAC 40. This has obviously been very weak. More recently, here's an important level. Uh, you know, we're watching for a potential return to the, the lows that we saw in mid-August or early August. Here's the DAX. Um, the DAX uh, today basically broke below and gapped below a pretty important level of support, uh, which may signal that there's a bigger trend being broken here. There's also a big uptrend that was broken as well. So this is a pretty important uh, break today that we got in the DAX. So this could be potentially also signaling that we're in for a little bit of a further move lower, at least uh, in the DAX and in the CAC. Uh, when you look at the uh, stock 50, you're also seeing the same sort of weakness uh, developing. When you look at you know at Hong Kong, uh, that's been weaker more recently as well. You can certainly see that we've given back a big portion of the gains that we got in China on the China trade. And you're the same thing with the CSI 300. Uh, well, and again, when we look at the Cosby, this is another one that's important to keep track of. This has been very weak more recently. Again, I keep track of this because the IWM tends to trade pretty closely with it. Uh, again, you're not really getting that confirmation of a move higher in the IWM because the Cosby is telling you at this point that the IWM, the small cap Russell 2000 index, should actually be trading lower in the not too distant future. So uh, those two signals sort of suggest again that you know you're seeing this rotation, you're seeing this weakness really overseas as well, which is also sort of complementing this idea that you know equities are likely to be a little bit more volatile maybe a little bit more of a downtrend than I think than what most market participants are expecting. Even when you look at the Taiwan uh, stock market again, which is again where you think about AI, right? Uh, that's been very weak uh, more recently as well. Hasn't even recaptured the highs that we saw in July. Certainly it looks like there's an uptrend that's been broken there as well. So lots of mixed sig lots of negative signals when you look internationally uh, and you start looking at some of these other indices and even when you go back home to the u.s rsp has been weak dow jones industrial has been weak uh lots of signals that really kind of imply that you know maybe stocks just aren't really that strong here maybe we're not going to see this big leg up to over six thousand like everyone thinks is coming maybe we are primed to see a little bit of a move lower here uh you know over the next uh, couple of days and weeks uh, as we head into the election and uh, potentially even coming out of the election, depending upon who wins, how the results are, and what kind of outcome there is. So I would just keep an open mind to this. You have obviously the key levels that need to be to watch. I mean, I don't need to tell you that obviously if we hit support here at 58 and a quarter and we don't break it, that the next direction is going to be higher. I think that's pretty much common sense, right? So uh, I'm giving you the levels that you need to watch where if they break, they, they indicate another move down. Anyway, have a great rest of your night and we'll see you again soon. Bye.